My name is Steve Nelson and welcome to how to create any Lightscribe label using the Lightscribe template labeler. Okay then, let's check out the Lightscribe template labeler and see what we've got to work with. This is a default workspace. From here you can select the template from those that you have installed or directly from the thumbnails below pick one you like the look of and double click on it and it'll open it up for you to edit. For this example we'll use the wedding frames template. If you click on it, it opens up here. You see a background image with wedding frames and you have three editable regions. Two for photos and one at the bottom for text. If you do add anything and you want to go back to the plain one, you push the reset and it'll restore that. But as you see, that's it. That's all you can do. So let's close the program. As we can see, standard templates offer very little flexibility. To overcome this, we actually have to design our own templates. What this really means is using a graphics program of your choice, Photoshop, Fireworks, anything else for that matter, design completely the label you wish to create. Here I've done one in Fireworks and the size of it in this case is 800 by 800. There's a JPEG version of the same thing and a thumbnail 128 by 128 pixels. These two latter images are what we will be using in the program. I'll show you that now. To make use of these images we need to go into the back of the program. So we go into My Computer, through the C drive, through Program Files, to locate the folder for Lightscribe Template Labeler. Open that up. And there are all the files associated with the program. One we're interested in is folder template labeler and then content and templates. Here we'll find two folders, backgrounds and thumbnails and a list of all the templates or template files, LST files that would have been downloaded or you would have had with the program initially. This is the default set that came with the program. Go into backgrounds and there we'll see wedding frames and all the others. This is um, what they all are, 1200 by 1200, though that is not necessary when you create yours. And then along with the backgrounds there's the thumbnails of exactly the same. These are 128 by 128 pixels. What you must remember is all of the names are identical and that's what makes this work. So go back into backgrounds. This time what we'll do, we're going to make an adjustment to the wedding frames image. Open up the ones we created earlier and drag the image, the larger of the two obviously, or copy and paste into backgrounds with Vista or 7 you'll have to um, go through a few of these things with XP you don't need all this. And there we have it at the moment called Lightscribe Toolbox but that will change in a minute so we can use it in the program. First thing we need to do is to change the name of the one we're going to use. We'll call this Wedding Frames 1. So if we want to use it again, it's available. We're going to delete it. And then we rename the image we brought in. 
you guessed it, wedding frames. Spelt exactly the same, upper and lower case. Each time we make one of these changes, obviously we have to go through this procedure. We're back into the template folder. And this time we do the same with thumbnails. Drag the thumbnail into the new, or should I say, existing thumbnails folder. Once again, we have to rename the wedding frames thumbnail. Same as before, wedding frames one. And that will allow us to use the name wedding frames for our thumbnail. Thus allowing all parts of the program to tie up. Obviously you don't have to use the one wedding frames, you could use any of them, but make sure you always use the same one correspondingly in the thumbnails and the backgrounds. OK then, let's see how that's affected the Lightscribe template labeler program itself. We scroll down the list, fingers crossed, we should come across our new label. There we are. Double click on that and that will open up. Whoa! Panic may be setting in. We still have these image fields, text fields. We didn't get rid of them. No, we didn't because this is built into the LST file. However, if you go into edit items, you could put something there if you wished. Obviously you don't. But if you go into print and preview, lo and behold, nothing. They don't exist because you haven't used them. So don't panic. It's great. You can check what your label will look like if you're using any of the color discs. Back to the original gold. Always choose best if you didn't think to already. If you're not happy with the depth of contrast, obviously you can burn more than one copy. That's the wonderful thing about Lightscribe. This is obviously your Lightscribe drive and the status ready to label. So we'll cancel that. As I said, don't worry about these image fields still remaining there. They'll disappear in the final burn as long as you don't put anything in there. So that's it. As you can see, if you can design your label in an image editing program, you can use the Lightscribe template labeler to burn that Lightscribe label. However, like most people, you'll probably require greater flexibility and control in your Lightscribe labeling process. To achieve this, please check out the Lightscribe toolbox at lightscribetoolbox.com. Here we have all the software you'll ever need to create great Lightscribe labels with total flexibility and control over the design and labeling process. Thanks for watching the video. My name's Steve Nelson. Take care. Bye for now.